And how are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Doing wonderful. Thank you for taking the time to sit down and talk to me. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Well, definitely. We'll go ahead and just jump right into this. So, Tim, I mean, you guys are, you know, just celebrated your 20 years um, as a band together. Like, that's. You know, a lot of, at that point in time, a lot of people are sending their kids off to college and, you know, doing all those things. And I guess the band's almost like a child for you. So, so how is that just with 20 years, you know? You know, it, it, when we were approaching the 20 year mark, we just kind of sat along and said to ourselves, how in the hell did we make it 20 years? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's like most marriages don't last that long. And here we're married to <laughs> four of us, you know. <laughs> and uh, it's just, it's been a, it's been such a crazy ride. So many, you know, ups and downs, a lot more ups and downs, you know, thank goodness for the band. But we, uh, you know, we wanted to celebrate it and, and kick it off right. So we put together for the first time ever, a like a greatest hit, best of album. And, uh, you know, it got so well received because we put some, uh, you know, the hits on there and put some alternate mixes, some unreleased songs, a brand new song, some, you know, just some special things. And, it's like kind of everybody kind of looked at it like, wow, this band really has been around 20 years. And so many, it kind of opened up so many more doors to us as far as like uh, festivals and other opportunities. It's it's like we're jam packed with, you know, stuff between the United States and Europe and the UK with, you know, and, all summer and, long and, and beyond. We're, we're really, uh, it's really a cool thing. And so you would say that kind of like that kickstart for, you know, like the tours that you guys have coming up was from this compilation album that you guys just put out? Yeah, I mean, it kind of it kind of ignited a spark in the uh, in the industry and, you know, the people that book all this stuff, because, you know, we, you know, put it out there. You know, this is a 20 year celebration for Soil, a greatest hits album. And, you know, everybody just started calling us saying, you know, this would be a great time to have Soil headline this fast or join that fast or play this tour or that tour and it's it's kind of like yeah it, i mean we were already you know doing some great stuff but this just kind of put some turbo in the tank because everybody kind of realized well i didn't realize soil's been around that long and we're kind of like yeah neither did we really <laughs> right no and that's very interesting to hear instead of you know i mean with the fact that you know you guys have been around so long just instead of trying to push out like you know the new albums the new singles um, like, you know, a lot of the now today's day and age bands are doing, you know, to kind of step back and it's just like, hey, like we need to highlight, you know, our, our best times. And, you know, I, I dare to say, you know, uh, throw it into the category as like, oh, the oldies are our, our best hits. But I mean, ideally, that's what they are. And I think a lot of people are scared of, you know, uh, the past and like, oh, we'll move forward, move forward. But, you know, to really just highlight those things that make soil soil and then to even and come in and do what you guys did and, you know, do like the revamping um, and the different versions and adding some of that live stuff on there. I haven't seen anyone do that in in a long time, personally. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, a, a lot of people too, like, I mean, you touched on a really good point is so many of these bands that have been around 20, 30, sometimes even 40 years, they're, they're so afraid of being lumped in as you know, like old timers or a classic rock band or, you know, this mm-hmm. and that. And they, like you said, they always want to, oh, we have to reinvent ourselves. We have to, you know, put something new out and we have to be seen as, as, you know, hip and modern in this. And, you know, we're, we're just, we're looking at it as almost the opposite. We're, we're very proud of what we accomplished. And, you know, we broke out on the scene in a big way when we really, you know, ignited with the scars record and the song halo in 2001 mm-hmm. and 2002. And, you know, at that point, that's, you know, 18 years ago. So we, uh, you know, we're looking at that as, you know, a celebration rather than something that we're ashamed of or we want to hide. We don't care, you know. It's uh, it's a pretty mm-hmm. good testament to say that we've survived this long. You know, and we still do put out new material, and it gets embraced really well. But, you know, we don't we don't forget about the stuff that got us to where we are as e- either, you know. No, definitely. Yeah. And I, I think that a lot of people, you know, it's almost like an alternate life for you. Like, you know, thinking back, you're like, wait a minute, like that was the best. Like this is, you know, really still all of us, the, um, you know, everything that we did. So I'm glad to hear that you guys, you know, are 
confident and uh, happy with your old stuff and not pushing it out. But I guess that kind of leads me, you know, into the question with, you know, I guess the whole bandwagon of, you know, like Rock is Dead and it's fading out and, um, and, and that whole era. I mean, with you guys, like with this compilation album and kind of like, hey, you guys, like, this is what we've done. Um, are there any talks for um, anything new coming out? You know, the, I know you guys have been pretty spot on with releasing new albums um, or EPs every two to three years. And, um, you know, this last one, the compilation came out in 2017. But anything new, you know, it's been a few years. So is there something on the line for that? Or Yeah, I mean, it, we were actually just talking about that a few weeks ago as well. And, you know, it's coming up in August. It'll be uh, – five years since we put out a studio record so we definitely you know looked at each other and said you know what we got to get up and really you know finish these songs because we have a bunch of ideas and some pieces of songs and things like that that we've been working on for a long time but you know nowadays with technology and you know the availability of everything you know everybody kind of scattered we used to all live in Chicago and we you know go in the sweaty rehearsal space and spend hours jamming together and really pound out stuff really fast <laughs> as you get older and and the way you know the the world works now it's like everybody can be scattered all over the place but to reel that in and you know send in music across the internet and stuff we, we got to focus in a little bit more so i think we're going to go back to the old school way and just lock ourselves in a rehearsal room for you know, an extended period of time. Yeah, I out. personally don't see how bands can do that. You know, like they're, you know, they're all Skyping each other and like they're trying, and I'm like, I, I personally, like, I feel like you almost really lose that genuine, like, um, aesthetic. And I feel like the just, I mean, even not be a lot of bands that are doing that, but to see, you know, I mean, I mean, rock's been around since, I mean, you know, one of the founding grounds of music to hear that, you know, some of like the the ways are still there and that, you know, technology is kind of overpowering and, you know, changing the way that they are. But just hearing from you guys, you're like, no, nope, we're, you know, still jamming our old music. We're still jamming uh, the way we used to. We're still creating the way that we used to. Um, it's just refreshing to hear because, once again, going back to that phrase, like, oh, that's the old way. That's outdated. And it's like, well, you know, why are people still buying and creating vinyls? Like, why are people, you know, you know doing the things that they – did when all of this started yeah i mean not, now we're gonna you know eventually going back to the the old school methods will be hip and trendy but you know right now everybody's kind of like oh no you know this is the way you have to do it and stuff but and that's the beauty of music there's really no right or wrong way to do it because you know that's why people have you know people say bands suck and people say bands are awesome it's like you know but bands get popular and bands have their fan bases because they touch a certain audience just like you know what works for one band doesn't work for another. It is kind of the beauty of music and why it's so colorful and so, you know, vast and things like that is, you know, one man's junk is another man's treasure in, in the <laughs> industry and stuff. So there's, I mean, there's plenty of bands that, that are gigantic that I just don't understand why because they, they do nothing for me. But, you know, millions of people otherwise beg to differ. And there's, you know, there's bands that have, you know, a super small fan base. And I'm like, why aren't these bands bigger? They're so amazing. But they just, you know, they don't strike the nerve and, in another certain aspect, but, you know, for us, you know, everything for us, you know, we've tried everything every different way under the sun, but, you know, for this band getting into a, a nice sweaty rehearsal space and being in front of each other and laughing and making jokes and, and bouncing ideas off of each other, that's where we've always gotten our best material. So I think we're going to, uh, you know, jump back into that and see what comes, you know, if it's, if it's five songs, 10 songs, 15 songs, you know, we'll kind of dictate, what kind of a release will be next, whether it be like an EP or a full length or double album or whatever that, you know, how it comes out of us. But, you know, we're definitely high tide, you know, just kind of sum that up. We're definitely, you know, long overdue for a, a new record. And that's that's going to be the focus after we finish all the touring this year and in the next. And speaking of the touring, you know, that's going on this year, I mean, uh, you guys are coming up in July. You guys are going to be doing um, a lot of different festivals, specifically one I'm most excited for would be the um, Incar Incarceration Festival. Have you guys played uh, at that festival before? No, we actually haven't. Uh, for the, you know, for the first time, we actually played Rocklahoma this year. We're playing Incarceration, you know, formerly Ink in the Clink. And, uh, you know, I've always been a huge fan of that festival and I love the way they combine you know the tattoo aspect with the rock music because you know they're so intertwined to begin with it's cool that you know a festival actually inter is 
bringing both of those things together. And I think it's going to be a great, great thing. And to put, you know, put it at a haunted uh, prison, an abandoned prison, you know, just the icing on the cake. And you couldn't ask for a better lineup that we're playing with that day. I mean, uh, seven. Oh, yeah, you guys are on day three, right? Yeah, it's like Seven Dust and Black Label Society and Hate Breed, and uh, it's just going to be a, a massive uh, lineup. I mean, some of our favorite bands, so it's going to be really cool to see most of those guys again from the other bands and play with them. It's going to be a great, great day. We're really looking forward to it. So now, do you uh, are you planning on getting a tattoo while you're there, Tim? Is that something that's on your agenda? <laughs> you know, I, funny enough, me and our guitar player and our drummer, all three of us don't have any tattoos. I mean, we've been in we've really? been in this yeah we've been in this business for so long, and none of us have tattoos. Our singer Ryan's covered head to toe, so he makes up for for the lack of <laughs> tattoos for the rest of us. But uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, we I don't know why. I mean, me personally, I just I, I've never found anything that I was willing to to completely live with for the rest of my life on my body. And the other problem is is I. I when I start something, I have to finish it or it drives me nuts. So if I got one, right. <laughs> I'd have to get the whole sleeve done and then commit to hours and hours in the chair and thousands and thousands of dollars <laughs> to get it done. And it would just, it, it's, it's so much of a, it would take so much energy and stress <laughs> to just get one because I'd have to have a hundred after that. So I just, right. I I You're like, really ah, I'd rather commit my energy into my music than into my body ink. <laughs> Exactly. And probably the same reason I've never done cocaine or anything like that before in my life either, because once I started, I'd probably like it too much and never stop. So I, have, I definitely know my limitations of what to do and what not to it at this point in my life, you know. Yeah, yeah I guess you kind of already have that hindsight without really even having the, you know, have done the act to begin with. But I mean, that's just to have that self, really the discipline and control, like knowing yourself to be like, hey, like, this would be cool. I know I would love it, but I know it would just go overboard. But to, you, to go ahead and, and acknowledge that. Uh, a lot of people don't have that trait. So, I mean, definitely kudos to you. And I'm sure that just reflects with, um, I mean, anything from, you know, with your music and just, I mean, everything else that, you know, goes hand in hand with what you do as a career. Um, it's Yeah. Fun. I mean, just like you said, being in the industry, constantly being around people that, you know, get the tattoos that, you know, I mean, I'm sure you're around bands all the time that are doing all the drugs and stuff, but just to know yourself well enough that you're like, ah, I know I'd love it, but I'm not going to do it. That's very refreshing to hear. <laughs> well, thanks. Yeah, I'm just, I'm a zero to a hundred guy. Either I have to do something zero percent or a hundred percent. So <laughs> probably one of the reasons I've been in soil for 20 years. <laughs> Right, you're like, it's all in or nothing. So, I mean, being in this for 20 years, is there anything, I mean, looking back on it, that you're just kind of like, or even any pending accomplishments that, you know, it's, I mean, 20 years later, and you're like, man, like, we still just have not done this yet, or something that's like, you know what, now we're going to, this is our time to do it. Like, are there any pending accomplishments that you guys have yet to do? Yeah, I mean, there's there's two for me, actually. Uh, Being in this band and touring and stuff, you know, and, and stuff like that. I, I've been to 49 out of 50 states, minus Alaska, so definitely would love to play in Alaska, or at least set foot in there to say, I could actually say I've been to all 50 states. And the other thing is, is the band has never played Japan before. We, uh, really? We had the okay. chance, yeah, we had the chance to go on the Scars record, because the Scars record was doing really, really well in Japan, but we okay. were also blowing, we were blowing up in the UK, like, exponentially, and the label and our agent kept sending us back to Europe, back to the UK to really blow up that market. And we were, you know, doing a lot of touring in the U S too on home base because the record was doing well there. And we, we kind of neglected Japan on, on that scars record when we had the chance to do, you know, a festival and do some touring there. And then we never got asked back. And, uh, oh, man. and we, we kind of missed the boat on that. If to where, if we would have went, we could have built the fan base and continued to build that market. So, you know, I, I'm constantly bothering our booking agent. You know, get us to Japan. I don't care. I don't care if we play for free. You just got to go there. Just somehow get us there. So it's right. Like, uh, You're like it's, it's on my something. bucket list. Like have to go. Yeah, and of course, you know, with with our luck, you know, now Japan. It used to be so huge for Western music. It used to be like if you were a band in the U.S. and went to Japan, you were just instant rock star, and they love the Western music. But now, the scales have actually tipped and. Western music has actually diminished over in Japan, and they've really been getting into their own culture and, and bands and stuff of their 
of their, uh, you know, of their sustenance and stuff like that. And, you know, so now it's even harder than ever to go to Japan. And since we've never been there, it's even harder than that. So we'll see. I might just have to take a vacation over there to go. But. <laughs> I don't know. I, I feel pretty confident after talking to you now and, I mean, with the compilation album coming out. And I, I don't know. I feel like that, you know, Japan is in your near future. You know, it's even though, like you said, that one ship sailed and you're like, man, we kind of missed the opportunity when, you know, our, our scene was in the high rise for Japan. But I don't know. I think that it's mentality is reality, and you're in the back of your mind, like, hey, we're going to go. Um, I, th- I think you guys are going to get there. And so what was the second um, pending um, accomplishment that you were talking about? You're like, there is, was that just the Japan and uh, traveling the states? Yeah, the Japan, and, and I still need to get to Alaska. That's the and only Alaska, state yeah. I haven't been to. I hit, if I can hit Alaska, we'll have been to all 50 states. So that's, uh, that's on the bucket list as well. Other than that, you know, I mean, as a band and as a musician, I mean, I, we've accomplished everything we set out to do and, and way more than we ever thought that we would ever be capable of. I mean, we've got, you know, plaques on the wall for, you know, gold and silver certifications and we've toured the world. We've played arenas. We've, you know, done everything we could possibly dream of as being kids and aspiring musicians. And, you know, everything, everything from here on out is just icing on the cake as the, as far as I look at it. I love it. So in in regards to icing on the cake, you know, as I mean, maybe even just yourself or um, you know, the band as a whole, like, are there any, um, you know, I, I want to say, you know, guitar heroes or like rock and roll heroes or maybe anyone um, that, you know, Soil could sit down and have dinner with that ever lived, like, who would those three, you know, whether it be groups or icons be? Yeah, well, I mean, my favorite band since I've been 10 years old has been Motley Crue. And uh, yeah. I, I've had... <laughs> I've had the amazing opportunity to, to meet Nikki Six and befriend Nikki Six, and we were in okay, contact yeah. for quite a few years. And he was actually a fan of, of Soil, and uh, we actually got offered to, to tour with Brides of Destruction, one of his side bands. And uh, uh, it didn't end up panning out because Brides of Destruction got put on hiatus, but he actually invited us yeah. to come out and tour with them. So, I mean, for like my, you know, icon and rock and roll hero to actually ask my band to, to come out on the road and you know, just sit down and talk to him and, and meet him in person and talk on the phone. I mean, it, it was it was very surreal. And, uh, you know, met Tommy Lee before. We were actually recording one of our records uh, next next to Tommy Tommy Lee in the studio when he was doing the uh, Tommy Land uh, solo record. So got to meet wow. him. But still, still to this day, haven't met Vince Neil or Mick Mars. So, you know, if I could sit down, you know, even just shake their hand and meet those guys in person, that'd be pretty cool. I, I re- at this point in my career, I really don't geek out to any bands or musicians anymore because we've either toured with them or met them or this or that. But Motley Crue, I still go goo goo gaga over for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that probably you know, brings up all the childhood memories and really just the roots of who you are as a musician and as an individual. Um, but no, yeah, you know, I mean, it doesn't have to be that. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Into, oh, I was going to say they actually, they're they're the reason I got into you know hard rock and metal and stuff is I heard Shout at the Devil and I was you know hooked from that point on and that's how I discovered every other band in in existence you know in that genre. So right, I mean you even went from I mean death metal to you know to bringing it back to like you know the heavy rock alternative side. So I mean you're just kind of all around the board when it comes to that. Um, is there, um, you know, I guess speaking of other genres and stuff, do you guys, like, uh, like have any other side projects? Or are you guys, like, you know, 100%, like, you know, dedicated to soil? Or is there something else? Uh, you know, I know you guys have, like, some acoustic stuff let out. Or is there just, like, you know, another side of soil that we don't really get to see? Yeah. Uh, I mean, as far as, you know, side projects and stuff like that, we've all, da- you know, we've dabbled in some stuff. Uh, soil's the, you know, the mothership and the, the main focus. but me and Adam, uh, a few years ago, we got together with, uh, our buddy Brian Scott, who is the singer from the Union Underground, and our buddy Will yeah. Hunt, who's the drummer currently for Evanescence, but he's played in, like, every band under the sun you can imagine. And the four of us mm-hmm. actually formed a, uh, a little side project called Into the Fire, and we recorded a couple of songs. They're actually up on iTunes and okay. you know, Spotify, and you, you can get it everywhere. It's, it's just a little three song EP, and it was, uh, it was just the four of us coming together and, you know, putting some songs together and just having some fun with it. It was, it was a no pressure situation. We, 
we didn't tour on it. We didn't want to, you know, give it our full attention and have a go at it. It was just something that we did to show another side of us as musicians to scratch that itch uh, as far as, you know, doing a little something different and playing with some different people. And it turned out amazing. And we shot a video for one of the songs and had a great day hanging together and shooting that. And it was just a really, really fun thing to do that we didn't have any pressure on. There was no uh, motivation to sit there and, and break it out into something big mm-hmm. or focus on it 100%. It was just something we threw out for the fans and stuff. And the reaction was phenomenal. And it was it was a cool little thing to, you know, put on the resume list and pat ourselves on the back to say, hey, we can go out and, you know, still write good songs with other people and, and play with some other people and have a good time at it. So that's out there and available. It's called Into the Fire. You can, you know, look it up on every platform. It's out everywhere digitally, YouTube, uh, Spotify. Definitely, yeah. We'll make sure that we that. post links for all of our audience and stuff to see just because I love, you know, seeing the other projects that, you know, I mean, the band, of course, together as a whole, what they have, but, you know, a lot of the individuals, some of the things that they do that kind of make them who they are as an instrument for, you know, their band, like for Soil that it's made you. Um, so, and, you know, throughout the, you know, your years of doing this with the band, um, you know, I mean, obviously your instrument, you know, the bass, like that is, is you and your bass. Is there, um, over the years, has there been a company that you've just been like 100%, like I couldn't perform without this, you know, these type of strings or this guitar or this amp, or is there, you know, just a company that you're just super, you know, gung-ho about? Yeah, I mean, again, I'm a, uh, I'm a definite, like, creature of habit and of very loyal person so when i find something i like i i stick to it so you know my my stuff that i've i've stuck to for you know years i mean probably going on like 15 years plus is uh specter bases by far my okay. favorite bases i've ever played uh tech 21 sans amp i mean the best preamps in the world i have a i have all orange amps and cabs you know they sound fantastic sit strings i've actually been with them through my entire career from the death metal days and oppressor to soil oh, up wow. until now. I mean, we literally been with them. I, me and Adam have been with them. I mean, geez, since we were like teenagers. <laughs> so, I mean, SIT strings has been there for us, you know, through everything. And they're just one of the greatest string companies, uh, EMG pickups and, uh, you know, in tune guitar picks. We, we just stayed with all those companies for so long. And, you know, it's, it's the secret to the tones and, and the way we play, and there's just a comfort level there. Great stuff. Yeah, no, definitely. You know, from you know the shape to the material to, I mean, just like the manufacturer behind it all. Just a lot of people don't realize, you know, how much that plays into the sound. And it's, you know, it's such a beautiful, uh, you know, thing. Hearing, I guess, artists talk about it because, you know, me coming from just a music lover and not really a musician, hearing someone talk about, you know, the the instrument that creates the sounds that they want. It's it's such a beautiful thing. It's almost like, you know, an artist and their paintbrushes. You know, that's what gives you, you know, your picture. Um, so, oh, I'm sorry. Um, so, yeah, just kind of hearing a lot of artists, they're usually like, no, like, this is the one I want to go with. And just kind of with today's day and age with everything, you know, being like digital and Bluetooth and, and all the crazy stuff, you know, the rockers are just, I mean, sticking to their roots and what they know. Um a, you know, a group or a movement that Soil um, personally aligns with, or just, I mean, you personally, Tim, that uh, the audience here at Rise can help spread the word out about? You know, me personally, I'm, I'm a huge advocator and lover of uh, of the oceans and marine life and things like that. So, you know, oh, I, yeah. I, belong to all, I belong to all those organizations and donate to, like, the Ocean Conservancy is, like, a really big one and the World Wildlife Fund and and all these people and all these organizations that actually go to, you know, clean up environments and, and pull pollution out of the ocean and go for conservation and stuff like that. So, you know, if I could shout out anything, I would definitely shout out, you know, the Ocean Conservancy, World Wildlife Fund, anything that, you know, is into preserving the oceans and the rainforests and nature and stuff like that. Because, I mean, that's, you know, that's the whole balance to the whole reason we're here and what keeps, you know, the planet as healthy as it is. You know, we destroy that. and we're going to all be, you know, all those apocalyptic movies that they make and stuff. We're going to be mm-hmm. living in those if, we, if we're not careful. So I, uh, definitely. I definitely am an advocate of that. And stop shark finning. I can't stand it when I hear of all these cultures, you know, cutting off fins yes. of sharks and things like that. And some of these sharks don't get mature 
until like five to ten years after they're born and they only give birth to a couple pups. So we kill off the top of the food chain and destroy the sharks. The whole earth is going to crash because the whole food chain is going to go. So stop shark finning. Those are my messages for today. No, that was beautiful. I love, you know, you can love rock and roll, you can love death metal, and you can still love our planet. So that's very beautiful. Faith and humanity is restored for the rockers. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Tim, I don't want to take too much of your time. Um, I think I might have went a little over time. You're just so easy to talk to. I love it. (laughs) Oh, um, thanks. You know, I'm rising up to meet the dawn again.